Hello, hello everybody, it's 5.38 p.m. Central Time on the 25th of October, 2022. It's Tuesday here in the United States. Hope you're doing well, and we are here on the Earthquake 3D live stream. I am live right now, however, I was shut down throughout a good part of the day. Once the earthquakes that we were looking for in several different locations started to hit, now, if I do sound a little strange, it's because I had a tooth pulled three days ago. Got the gauze out of the mouth finally, but we're not here to talk about any of that. Wonderful stuff, though. Let me tell you what. Nothing beats dental work. Except for YouTube. All right, let's go over and turn on a display capture and show you what happened. 6.4 to 6.8 earthquake. Now, again, at 6.4, striking North Philippines. This is a significant sized earthquake. However, this is not the only significant sized earthquake that struck in the past 24 hours. We go all the way around to the opposite side of the planet. Down here, we also got a 6.4-ish earthquake. It's at 6.3 now. This is on the South Sandwich Islands bend of the plate. So really, we're on two adjacent sides of the Pacific plate spreading out two other plates away from the Pacific. Let me show you. So, for instance, down here at the South Sandwich Islands, notice here is the Pacific Plate. Then we connect over to Antarctica, and we're on the edge of Antarctica with that 6.4 down at the South Sandwich that struck last night. We're going to jump all the way across over to here, and look where we are. We're one plate over from the Pacific, going over to Asia, over in the North Philippines with the same size quake. Now we need to jump across the Pacific this way, to where the big arrow points across towards Colombia and Panama. And we got another 6.4 earthquake. Well, actually, now they brought it up to 6.7. 6.4 and a 6.7 striking a few days apart. One more out here by the Galapagos, the other in here right along the shores. Now, that's four different same-sized quakes within the last few days, not even the whole week. So what's going on? Let's go back to the USGS plate boundary map here where the red lines are. Hopefully you guys can see all this. So we're really spreading out all the way over to the adjacent plate. Again, I told you 6.4 and 6.7 struck off the coast of Panama and Colombia. Showed that to you just a few days ago. Now we're down here, down off the South Sandwich, and we're over here off the adjacent plate over to the west. Now it can all be traced back to the middle here where we have a bunch of deep earthquake activity that's coming up on the underside of the plate and where we have our letter Ds, our forecast area points. Anybody who told you earthquakes couldn't be forecast was incorrect. We can forecast where deep earthquakes are going to strike just based upon the, where the deep earthquakes normally strike. Observation. We have letter Ds where we expect our new deep earthquakes. And the deep earthquakes are raised high off the globe for easy identification purposes. And you can see right in the middle or on the side of each of our letter Ds, we have a new round of deep earthquakes. So I want you to imagine these deep earthquakes down below the plates leveraging up on the underside here right at Tonga, here where the Indo-Australian plate meets north into the diamond shape of the plate that just got hit with the 6.4, and up here off the coast of Japan, also up here next to Kamchatka, and all the way over here at North India going into Pakistan. And let me turn off all the quakes one more time. We have letter Ds there already, so you know where to look. So Tonga already got hit. Our two letter Ds here got hit with deep quakes. Here off the coast of Japan. Here next to Kamchatka. And over here at, well, actually that's Tajikistan, but it's just north of India or north of Afghanistan. Something's going on below all of this. And we get back to the USGS map. And something's going on below the whole region of the West Pacific going to Asia. What's going on down below the plates? Well, there's a lot of other things going on right now that you might not be aware of. For instance, Earth is being bombarded by high-frequency waves from HARP. And I know this for certain. HARP started on the 19th of October, beaming high-frequency pulses to Jupiter and the Moon to reflect off Jupiter and the Moon and come back to Earth to be picked up by high-frequency arrays listening at 10 megahertz to 100 megahertz out here in California in Owens Valley, and over here in New Mexico. And the arrays are listening on 10 megahertz to 100 megahertz, which means that's what's coming back towards Earth. 
Now what's really happening here is HARP is sending up a high frequency pulse or signals, huge bursts of energy from Gakona, Alaska, and it's coming out in a cone-like shape that then spreads out and goes to Jupiter however far away that is. Whether it's a few thousand miles or a few million miles or a few hundred million miles, I don't know. But it then reflects back off the planet, Jupiter, if it's a planet, and comes back to Earth. And when it reflects off and comes back, guess how big or wide of a spread it is? It's not a narrow beam coming back. It's a huge spread that encompasses the whole side of the Earth that's facing Jupiter to whatever time uh, the beam's coming back. They started on the 19th and are going to the 29th. Now, I do have something to say about this. Everyone, every professional in the world, plus every skeptic, plus everybody else, piled on to me over the course of 10 years. About HARP in particular, it was an area of study I did for many years. And they all told me, all the skeptics and deniers and professionals, that HARP could only be used for ionospheric research above Alaska. Now, I proposed, all the way back in 2011, that HARP could be used for communication with spacecraft. They were talking about Voyager or something. And I was like, why don't we just use, like, well, high, and I said, well, they're communicating on high frequency with the Voyager. Why not just send a high frequency pulse from HARP, you know, a billion watts right out in space. We could communicate with Voyager, no problem. And everyone in the world told me I was a conspiracy theorist. So it was not possible. It was only for ionospheric research, remember? So guess what high frequency pulses cause? Severe weather and earthquake activity but mainly severe weather. The high frequency actually doesn't cause the earthquakes. High frequency causes plasma up in the ionosphere, which creates VLF, very low frequency, which then causes earthquake. Now, how much is it gonna cost? I don't know, we don't have any previous examples on this. When was the last time they beamed HARP to another planet and back? Never. So, first time they're beaming it from one planet to the other, at least as far as I know. And it's the first example we have of Earth being re-bombarded with 10 megahertz to 100 megahertz. I don't know exactly where it's going to fall on the spectrum, but I think HARP is operating up to 10 megahertz. These arrays in California and Arizona are listening on 10 megahertz. And if you want to see the news on this, if you don't believe me, uh, I was told that HARP was being torn down back in 2013 and 2014. Turns out that was a load of disinformation crap from people who was putting out disinformation on HARP all the way back. Well, geez. How far back were they putting out dis disinfo on it? Hey, wait a second. Where are my heart posts? Several of my posts. Wait, wait, where are my heart posts? Where's the heart post, guys? Dude, my heart post is gone. I've got my, look, they left this one. They left this one, but they took down the actual heart post. Dude, I think I still have it in a comment here. Hold on. Oh, uh, wow, man, wow. Dang, real-time actual censorship you get to see live. A missing heart post that everybody was giving me shit on yesterday is now gone. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, let's go down below this one. My cat picture, that's a little honey. Here we go. Thank God I posted it there. There's the news. There's the news on October 17th announcing bouncing a signal off the moon and bouncing a signal off Jupiter. New $9.3 million grant, too, wasting $10 million on this shit. So, pardon my language, but Jupiter is currently 372 million miles from Earth. Yeah, right. That explains why my Sony Handycam was able to pick about back in 2011 and the moons around it. Four-inch wide Sony, Sony Handy... It's not four-inch long Sony Handycam. One-inch wide lens. Let's go back and start over. So, too deep... Two sets of deep earthquakes over here in the West Pacific. In between, we have two shallower, larger earthquakes spreading out and away. Now, this doesn't cover what's happening on the West Coast of the United States or over in Europe. I'm just talking about the two big earthquakes that are striking on both sides going out from the Pacific. Now, people are asking me, did the big earthquake that we were looking for hit? Well, I, I kind of don't know. They shut off the seismic stations, you remember? You guys know that, right? coordinatedly shut off the seismic stations between a bunch of agencies. People accuse me of faking it. I don't know. All the stations went blank. People said they shut it off. That's all I can report to you. But did it eight hit? I don't think so. But I, don't, I wouldn't be able to show it if it did. Because on the day of seven, day seven, they shut off the, all the stations. Just for a little bit. Don't worry. However, we have a 10-day watch going for that 8.0 earthquake. Today is day nine. So if it doesn't hit by tomorrow, it's a full flop. 
and I mean a full flop. It's already a flop to me if it doesn't hit by day seven. It means that the earthquake we were looking for didn't hit. But guess what did happen right where we were looking for the earthquake? A volcano that hasn't been on the list in months showed back up right here. Lengila suddenly erupted. Now we have several sudden eruptions going on around the area, all the way up to Russia and all the way over into Krakatau and Sumatra, Indonesia. Back after months, not on the list. Let's go back and take a look. Sudden volcanic eruptions, multiple mid-range to upper sixes. Oh, look at this. A 10,000-foot high blast up at a lade in the Kiril Islands all of a sudden. Let's just read down the list. Popocatépetl in Mexico, Sabancaya in Peru, Fuego in Guatemala, Nevado del Ruiz volcano in Colombia. A lade up in the Kiril Islands a few times. Chivalouche up in the Kiril Islands in Kamchatka. Semeru, 14,000-foot high blast, 140. Suvenis Ajima, Chivalouche again, Popocatépetl, Sanjay Fuego, Sabancaya, Nevado del Ruiz. Semeru again, 14,000. It's just a repeat. Oh, there's Krakatoa. Just a small little blast. 010. 0, 1,000 0. 1, feet to 2,000 feet high. Anytime I see it return on the list, though, anytime I see it return on the list, I have to watch it because of the what happened the last time when it returned on the list with a few thousand foot high blast. All of a sudden, it went boom and blew and put out a 50,000 or 75,000 foot high blast and a tsunami that killed a bunch of people. Anyway, back to the update. Deep earthquakes are hammering off down below the plates. We've got HARP sending signals to other planets which are coming back, which I don't know what to look for other than plasma interference in the upper ionosphere, which then we do see weird weather and earthquake effects come down below wherever the plasma is forming. Which if it's the whole planet, geez, you know, I, I, I don't have any examples of that. What else happened? Ah, Aze! Aze! 3.5 came rolling in from the northwest. And I saw that an earthquake was reported down here in the southeast at around the same time. So you got an earthquake up here on the arrow, 3.5, and then you get a 2.5 or 2. Point, what was it, 2.6? It was either a 2.5 or 2.6. Strike down here in the southeast. This is exactly what we look for. However, it struck down here to the far southeast. Where is that? What's down here to the southeast? Is that Sydney? Or Melbourne. I, I, I'm I sorry. I don't know. It's down here to the east-southeast. Uh, Adelaide up here. Kangaroo Island is where I was looking. Man, I need to learn your cities. Hold on. Hold on. It's going to bother everybody down there. They'll be like, Dutch, mate, come on down. Come see. You can learn what the city is. You'll never let me leave. You want to talk about a prison colony? Melbourne. There we go. <laughs> sorry. I had to crack the prison colony joke if you're talking about me coming down. I'll take you all prisoner. <laughs> okay, now let's go over to the west. Go out of the West Pacific. So, deep earthquakes, big earthquakes. Both are striking in the same day. Strike oh, and one more thing. Yesterday, I got on and talked about Philippines going down into the S-shaped bend here in the plate. You'd have to have been on live over in Twitch. And I don't know if you guys were over in Twitch with me. Were you? Here, hold on. Twitch. There it is. Twitch. Let's go over to the Twitch chat room really quick and just see who was in here yesterday when I was talking about the Philippines. If you were, press 1. And again, only if you were in here, guys. I don't need any special help or anything. I don't know how many people were in here. There's probably 100 people in here. How many people are in here now? 269 people are here. Yeah, there we go. Kilf. Okay, Kilf's a regular. These are people who are toothaching. Ha! Ha! If only you knew. Okay, everybody who's a regular was in here yesterday, me talking about it. I don't brag about these things. I barely even keep track of them. But I do have to tell you, I was talking about it yesterday. Because this morning when I woke up, all my internets were off. All three internet service providers. People told me to get Starlink, by the way. That is so funny. You know, I have it, right? It's on top of my roof. It, it doesn't matter. They shut that off, too, when I... People are like, who can shut off Starlink, cable, and DSL, and YouTube, and Twitch? Who can do all those things and delete posts off your YouTube page? Who can do all that? I propose to you. There's only one agency that can do that, and that's the agency of the U.S. government itself. <laughs> like all the sub-agencies that fall under it, but the uh, they're uh, calling it an agency. It's, it's an actual uh, corporation, the U.S. government. Okay, uh, speaking of corporations and government, let's go over to the uh, European Union. 
Go take a look at the Ur European Union and the earthquakes going around it. What about all the same size quakes? And they're exactly the same size. 3.2, 3.2, 3.2. And going over to the west, we take a step down. But coming across all of central and western, or I'm sorry, central and eastern Europe, 3.2s. Going up through Italy, we dead end into the Swiss Alps with one earthquake beyond it. And that one earthquake beyond it is right up in France. And at France, you got a 4.0 earthquake yesterday. Where is it, by the way? By the way, USGS is reporting this four point. What is this? A 4.4 down at the Strait of Gibraltar. But they're not reporting the four over here in France. I wonder why. Well, maybe you would see if the USGS reported it. You would see a set of fours going across all of Europe, going right out here to the edge of France. And then you'd see it like a path. And you'd see that it matches. Let me go over and show you. It matches this. The plate boundary and you'd see that we had fours coming out of turkey fours to near fives that went over to greece and fours that went up across up into france following this like a ramp jumping out of italy and going in this trajectory literally in that trajectory boom out to france a wave is traveling up and out and trying to maintain momentum as it's going out this way and what's out this way the next round of earthquakes of course Breaking again at the Reykjavik Jane's Ridge. How do you say this? I, I almost want to find out. Reykjavik Jane's Reykjavik Jane's Ridge. Hey, Duchess just came in. Say hi, babe. Hello, hello, everyone. Oh, you, you got a hello, hello. <laughs> yeah, I'm just telling the story of all the shutdowns this morning and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Guys, uh, if you only knew the story, but anyway, people are asking me, uh, they asked me if I was, over on YouTube, they asked me if I was suicidal, if I, you know, yeah, yeah, I'm like, no, no, I'm not suicidal, uh, uh, we've had it far worse, and I mean yeah. far worse, 2008, loss of the house. Oh, yeah, plenty of other times. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've got emotional support here, guys, it's not all bad, I do have to tell you, though, that it's going on, the shutdowns and so forth, <laughs> otherwise, you'd think it was just me here that's going through it, uh, no, uh, the, the whole fam is going through it. So, anyway, let's recap. A, a line of the same sized earthquakes over the last week, going up and out to the Reiki Jane's Ridge. But make note, it's a 4.6 to 4.5, right? And look what struck previously on the other side of Iceland. 4.4 to 4.5. So we have a 4.4, 4.5, 4.6 on both sides of Iceland. Now, in between the two, I have a warning going for Iceland. I also have a warning going for North Italy. Also, I have a warning going for Greece. They all expire tonight into tomorrow. The warning for Greece is right in here. And it's warning for up to 5.9. Hasn't happened yet. I've got a warning going for Iceland. It's also up for near 5.9. It is not hit yet either. And a warning for up to 5.0, 4.9. Striking in North Italy. Or I'm sorry, no, no, not, not North Italy. Campobasso. I had to change the location. That was, again, seven days ago, basically. So tonight is the last night of the warning for Europe, and nothing's hit as expected. Same with over here with the big earthquake. Instead of a big earthquake, an 8.0, we get a new eruption from a volcano that hasn't erupted in several months. but And several new eruptions, but no big activity. But then they shut the freaking stations off. And then I got accused of faking it. The, the station shut off story. They, they said that was me talking to myself. That's what made me play Justin Tribble last night. Anyway, so let's go over here on the west coast of the United States, where a 5.0 earthquake struck right next to our warned area a few days after the warning expired. And this is the earthquake we were looking for, the location, Alum Rock, Alum Rock, Alum Rock, Alum Rock. Uh-oh, let's go put it in and go take a look and see what's there. Five point something quake. This is right next to where we were looking. I will measure and see how far off we are from the worn location. So previously, we were looking off the coast, and that already happened. Up here, Eureka, Gorda Escarpment, that already hit. Now we're far to the south on the creeping section of the San Andreas, or just north of it. Or is this the San Andreas? Hold on. This might be an adjacent fault to the San Andreas. Let me check the USGS fault zone map. 
and there's our quake okay the red line is the usgs yeah it's adjacent fault let's get our fault names there we go calaveras fault zone central calaveras section look where it goes down to connects in like a wide junction that goes into the san andres and you notice it goes back up to the north and it connects up here see this lake that is where our swarm took place you got to also remember the volcanoes caught on fire this past week and last week before that so we had 5.0 level activity or near five up here next to eureka now we have 5.0 level down south i want to measure how far off i am from the two locations so let's go back and get the 5 to 5.1 earthquake europeans have it at 5.1 USGS has it at 5. It may have even been a bigger earthquake. I should probably go check the stations, but whatever. We're going to put the coordinates in and just measure it down to a fine point. Then we're going to measure down to the south, down to North LA, and see how many hundreds of miles I am off on this from North LA. There is no doubt that this earthquake struck down to the south of the previous earthquakes. It's just a matter of how far. So let's measure how far we are south of the previous earthquakes, and then we'll measure down to the south and see how far I am off. So it's 200. Here's Eureka. And the earthquakes came rolling in off the Gorda Escarpment this way, the south part of the Juan de Fuca. Here's the lightning bolt-shaped Juan de Fuca. First, we had activity out here in the ocean. Then we had activity here on land. Now we are 200, and, let's just say 250. We're 250 miles south of where the previous activity was and now i'd like to measure down to the south and see how far i am off on north la 250 exactly oh wait hold on just a little bit more 300 or 250 from fraser oh wait lake palmdale is where i want it there we go 277 so we're literally halfway between the two between where we struck up here it's 250 and then it's 270 down to the south so the halfway point just got hit between the two areas. I was warning here at Palmdale, and we previously warned up here in Northern California. There is no disputing that Northern California got hit previously with the five, which they have now downgraded to what? Four point, what did they downgrade it to? 4.3 and a 4.1. <laughs> sure, whatever. Anyway, there we go. So California's been hit right along the coast, but why? Why did it get hit with a five point whatever? Well, we, five point whatevers, we're going all the way around the plate and we are not immune. What happens here is that there's a flow or a wave that goes out across the whole Pacific and it drops off along each plate. So starting over here along the Indo-Australian plate, we went up and around through Alaska, back down through Canada, and then into the United States, following this red line from the north. We also went out over to the west, moved all of China, moved all of Iran and the Mideast, and moved over into Turkey and in South Europe. Then we went across the opposite direction to the east. We moved up in Colombia, and we moved down at the South Sandwich. I've already talked about that at the start of this update. We also moved along the coast of Mexico and Central America and went over into the Caribbean. So it stands to reason that we would also move here, does, does it not, when the rest of the planet is moving on the same basis, following these red lines. What this proves is that there's a flow or a trajectory to the earthquakes and that they spread out from where the deep earthquakes are happening, out and away, out, up, and away. So we're getting pushing up on the underside of the plate on one side, and then it spreads out and away and across over to the other. It's pretty basic. Now, the, a five is struck up on the creeping section of the San Andres, or right next to it, just south of the Bay Area. What are we going to look for? We're going to look for two things to happen, a big increase over to the east and a big increase down to the south. So over to the east of the five, you see our arrow, and down to the east by southeast down in Southern California, we still have our warning that expired last night. The warning expired last night for a five to hit here in Southern California. Again, right down at Lake Palmdale. I'm 270 miles off. I'm trying to get it down to 200 miles. So if I get it within 70 miles of my 200, I guess that's the earthquake we're looking for. So is Southern California gonna get hit? Yes. It's going to be hit by something pretty significant, but I don't think as big as the 5.1. I think this 5.1 will be flowing out this way. Do you see the Craton diagram? Do you see which way it points out of California? Points over to the east, 
and then we go over to the edge of the craton that goes down to Texas and back up the east coast of the United States. So two things are going to happen. One, this five is going to be split in half. Guess what a five splits in half to? Two four point nines. How ironic. If you don't know about the irony of the 4.9, I'm not going to get into it now, but Southern California would now be getting a 4.9. Same spot. Well, hold on. Before I say same spot, let's look at our previous earthquakes and just find out if there's a new halfway point. Yes, I, I'd have to change the location by 50 miles or 75 miles. I'd have to move it from Palmdale to Ridgecrest. That's it. Right where the green earthquake is right now. Actually, the new green earthquake just filled in the middle area that I was just going to be talking about. Okay. Well, anyway, this new little microquake in the middle is where we'd watch for a new 4.9. There's a thing called the Garlock Fault, and it goes in this exact direction in between these two sets of rings. Let me go back and show you on the USGS map. Here's the Garlock Fault. You see how it goes southwest to northeast, and all the others are going pretty much in the same direction, northwest to southeast. Anyway, we'd watch out here for a 4.9, and then we'd watch Texas for a 4.9. Texas-New Mexico border, edge of the Craton. It's all very basic and rudimentary if you understand that there's a flow that goes from the West Coast over to the East Coast. And it's a path of least resistance because this is a wave that's trying to avoid solid objects. It's going to try and go through the weaker points. So think of this like many people pushing on something, and the something you're pushing on has cracks in it. What's going to happen when you push on it? Well, the cracks, the splits in whatever you're pushing on, are going to absorb the full force of however many people or whatever is pushing on it, and it's going to break there next. Turns out this is the path it takes. So if there's a 5 on the West Coast, we tend to see 4s in the Midwest and even 4s on the East Coast. There's been many times in the past where we've seen the same sized earthquakes that strike on the West Coast go over and strike at the pumping operations, Texas and Oklahoma, even Kansas sometimes, and then over to the East Coast in the far Northeast, up in Quebec, Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, even as far South as Virginia. So if I'm going to issue a forecast on this now, I'm going to warn Ridgecrest instead of Palmdale for 4.9. And we'll issue that warning now for the next, since this earthquake just struck, let's just put it at two to three days. I mean, we don't even really watch that long. Then over to Texas, 4.9, edge of the Craton, southwest Texas to central Texas. Should feel it across the whole panhandle of Texas, maybe even as far as Dallas. And then the east coast up in Vermont, 4.0 or 3.9-ish. So fives, fours, threes across the plate in the next few days. Check this one off the list. It is 70 miles outside of my acceptable area. Again, I'm trying to get it down to, I'm trying to get down to 200 miles so I can sign off out of here. That's my goal. Right now, if I got it at 270, right? Ooh, shame on me. Let me smack myself a little bit. I'm not going to hit my other cheek because I already got that oral surgery done. That's enough punishment for one week. So back to it, let's talk about the smaller earthquakes and where they hit. Let's go up into the northwest, take a look at Washington, also go into Oregon, Idaho, and Yellowstone. So do you see this stack of earthquakes here? This is pretty interesting. See where we are, 38 kilometers north by northeast of Amboy, Washington? Would you like to see what's there? Why don't you just jump on board my ship? and sail away with me on a voyage of discovery. Let's go take a look. Because I do recall talking about this location just a few days ago, but for some other reason. What is this spot? I don't recall. Let's take a look. Oh, that's right. It's Mount St. Helens. And we are smack inside of the crater with a new swarm. Swarm of earthquakes inside of Mount St. Helens crater. Well, they can't blame this on trees exploding. They can't blame it on Farmer Joe with fire signatures. But I'll tell you what, the fires all around Mount St. Helens this past week now are accompanied by a new earthquake swarm. Let's go up to the north and go take a look. Where's 23 kilometers east-northeast of Ashford, Washington? What's that? What's this place? Must be a field in the middle of Washington. Growing grapes or something. Let's go take a look. Oh, you're not growing any grapes up here, are you? Right below the crater of Mount Rainier. Top of the crater. Top of the crater to you. 
you're really on the side of it. So there we are, no trees burning. But I do recall them saying that there was something going on. Oh, that's right. They said it was a, what did they say it was? A lenticular cloud. It wasn't any kind of volcanic activity, even though it was steam coming out the top of the volcano. No, lenticular cloud. Well, now there's a little earthquake swarm there, too. A, a cluster, not a swarm. A swarm I consider a swarm if it's 10 or more earthquakes in a spot. That's just a artificial threshold I put on it. Cluster of earthquakes, I mean, come on. Cluster of earthquakes at Rainier. Swarm of earthquakes at St. Helens. What's going on down here? What's this place? Oh, it's no big deal. It's called the Washington-Oregon border region. Well, they don't have any towns there by which to triangulate. So, you know, extremely rural West Coast, you know. Real rural. Oh, wait, what's this town right here? Oh, this town is called Government Camp? I guess it's just too far away to triangulate from at the Washington-Oregon border. Four miles? Yeah, man, that's pushing the limits of what they can do. What's this place? Oh, that's right. It's, it's another volcano. It's, it's called Mount Hood. We're on the side or flank of Mount Hood with another little outbreak of earthquakes. I guess, you know, they're probably not related to each other. Maybe we should just go over to the east, go see what's going on with these small earthquakes. Get out of here. The volcanoes are freaking me out. Oh, never mind. It's an explosion. We don't have anything to worry about there. So let's go take a look at where this explosion is. Probably a quarry or something, you know. If, if we get a quarry there, I'll be really uh, relieved. Let's go take a look. I don't know, man. We're pretty far. Look at this. We got a town here. Oh, there is. There's a little itty bitty quarry. I wonder why they only have explosions here in Washington. What's this place? Oh, the Hanford Nuclear Waste Storage Facility with all its old caskets and reactors and Manhattan Project location? What's this? Oh, this right here? Oh, that's nothing. That's the LIGO Gravity Wave Sensing Station with its long lasers that point down here into this place where they cross them in what's called a scalar where the beams cross. And what they're looking for inside of that scalar area even though they're using these long beams to vibrate, they're looking for little vibrations that come from across the universe. The universe! That's right, comes across the universe. But I'm wondering why they have it pointed at a right angle at all the heaviest elements known to mankind on the periodic chart, stored in caskets from the Manhattan Project. Maybe it has to do with what Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Bearden told us. Right before he died. Or no, I'm sorry, right after he died. You see, right after he died, Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Bearden's company sent me a disc. And it said, Dutch, don't know if you've seen this from Tom before. Then they shut down their company and disappeared after he died. But on the disc, it's him talking about how the Russians have the ability to detonate any nuclear material on the planet using radio waves and a scalar component where they can cross the beams. And that we've put these nuclear plants all over the place as basically like a holding a grenade with the pin pulled and a way to protect ourselves. That if they can detonate the material, that's fine, but or that's good for them, but they won't help them because it'll detonate everywhere. And we put them everywhere so they couldn't come over and invade. That's Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Bearden in his lectures so, anyway, eh, you can just ignore that explosion over there. Let's go over to the 1.8. Oh, hey, man, two explosions. Well, I guess we just need to go look it up. But it's again, this is nothing to worry about. Anytime you start getting explosions out there next to these facilities, it's just chance. So what's up here? What's going on up here? Do we have an actual quarry at this location? No, it's in a subdivision. It's Bubba out there with this Tannerite. Do we have a street level view? Maybe we can catch catch the rednecks out here doing this stuff. Yeah. Aren't you guys real dry up there right now? I don't know if you're going to be wanting to blow stuff up up there right now, but look where they're blowing it. Boom! Out there on this land. Big enough, the only explosion again across the whole country up here. Right there. That's. Oh, wait. Never mind the big power lines right there. Never mind the high voltage power lines. 
Never mind the big transmission lines. Don't ask no questions, guys. You start asking questions, I might have to answer them. If I have to answer them, that could lead to some trouble. So it's better you don't ask. There we go. Oh, there it is. That's where the blast came from, Dutch. Came from the quarry. I guess this is the only spot in the whole country they have quarries doing blasting. Otherwise, we'd have explosions all the way across the country. Ones and zeros. Instead, if you go look these up, these aren't quarry blasts. No. And they have the ability to list a quarry blast. Here, let me show you. Out here in the Mojave Desert, I'll give you an example. Oh, wait. That's not a good example. That's, that's an actual earthquake. Hold on. Wow, are they all earthquakes? Never mind. Make a liar out of me, right? Normally, when you click on all these, they're quarry blasts. There we go. Quarry blasts. See? Quarry blasts. What's the difference between a quarry blast and an explosion? A lot. <laughs> Apparently. There's a different definition for it. So explosions versus quarry blast. Hmm. Anyway, back up to the north. Is there anything else there that we need to know about? Let's go back and look again. Because power lines are there. We have an explosion there. Is there any kind of other facility here that I would need to know about that I'm just missing? What's this? An airport of some kind, right? Right? That's what it looks like. Are those garages? I mean, that looks like an airport strip. If, you, if I ever saw an airport strip, that's what an airport strip looks like. Fairwood, Mead. There'll be something here that everybody's like yelling at me in the chat room about right now that I'm just somehow missing. Well, what's this? Oh, huge electrical. Massive electrical. What is going on there? Right next to it is massive electrical. All right, we got massive electrical going on here. Usually where there's massive electrical, there's some kind of other electrical generation station nearby. Whether it's nuclear or coal-fired or wind or solar. But with these big trunks of power lines going out, we should just be able to trace the trunks of power lines back. Here's the Spokane River. Oh. Yeah. We got ourselves electrical generation, hydroelectric generation. Well, isn't that special? All right. Glad I checked. So an explosion next to the hydroelectric. Nah, no big deal. Are there any others we need to look up or have I made my point? I guess we should look up the others just to drive it home. Let's go look at this cluster of three earthquakes. Ntiat, 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 Washington. I hope you're learning something along the way that the earthquakes have a cause and that you need to look into each location to find out why it's being hit. So for instance, here we go. The high voltage power lines again. This time I have them marked because we keep getting so many different earthquakes next to the high voltage power lines. The hydroelectric dam is right here. I've already me memorized the location now because of so many earthquakes striking next to it. So electricity working on low frequency, VLF, very low frequency. Earthquake striking next to the electrical lines. Why? And the electrical generation. Why? VLF. What about the 1.0 down here? Nile, Washington. N-I-L-E. Nile like the river in Egypt. Denial. Denial is a river that flows through the heads of my skeptics. It never ends. Dude, hey, look where we are. We're right next to a volcano called Nelson Butte Volcano. Let's zoom in on the actual epicenter and see if there's anything here nearby. A lot of old basalt peaks. I wonder if this is lava flow at some point. Let's back it out. Oh, never mind. We're just to the east of Mount Rainier. Nelson Butte is just on the east side of Mount Rainier. Oh, look. Another hydroelectric dam. I guess they just have hydroelectric dams all over the place. That must be it. It's not that the earthquakes are striking next to the hydroelectric dams. It's that the hydroelectric dams are everywhere. And that's why the earth, that's why it just appears that they're striking. Do we have power lines to go away from there? Here, hold on. Let's follow the power lines. 
go down, cross, following this road, across. Do we go across this way? Close enough. Again, we get within miles of it. You got to understand, very low frequency has a peak but hundreds of miles apart. So each peak would be hundreds of miles apart on a very low frequency wave from Mother Nature. VLF in the electrical lines, I don't know what the peaks would be at. Probably a few hundred to a few thousand feet apart. Not as low as Mother Nature's VLF. Okay, which way do we go from here since we just had such a cluster up here in Washington? Do we go to the east-southeast down over to the edge of the Craton? Over to Yellowstone? Or do we go down into Oregon? Let's go over to Yellowstone really quick since we can just bounce this out really quick. Central Idaho, the biggest earthquake of the bunch, a three. And then over here at Yellowstone in the park, a stack of earthquakes. Do not mistake these earthquakes for tremors. Normally there's hundreds of tremors, if not thousands, per day in Yellowstone, not to be confused with the earthquakes, earthquakes cracking of the plate up above the magma chamber. So that's what these are, actual earthquakes. And that's a change, so sometimes we don't get any earthquakes in Yellowstone. Anyway, a stack of earthquakes in the park, and then a three over here in central Idaho. What's going on? The three in Idaho is above the deepest part of the magma chamber for Yellowstone. It goes down at an angle, 11 Grand Canyons in size, 30 kilometers. And the three is up above the magma chamber that feeds Yellowstone up at the surface where the swarm of earthquakes is. Now, if we go down to the south, south of Yellowstone, we're striking right next to Jackson Hole. Notice how it just says Wyoming. I don't like it that the USGS is doing this more and more, just listing things like Wyoming, because it doesn't really tell you where the earthquake is or what's at the location. And if you zoom in on the location, and you find out that it's next to this place, Palisades Reservoir. Let's go in and see what's going on on the reservoir. Oh, another hydroelectric dam. Maybe there's a reason they don't want people looking up the earthquake epicenters when you find a hydroelectric dam, and on the other side, you have this. Cinder Island, China Cap Butte, China Hat Butte, Decay Butte. These are all ancient volcanoes. And it's part of the greater volcanic field here, marked as the Blackfoot Lava Field from the Smithsonian, if you want to read it. So whether it's the Blackfoot Lava Field or the Hydroelectric Dam or that we're next to Yellowstone, here's Yellowstone. I would lend it since we're right next to the hydroelectric dam, you can't overlook it. You cannot overlook it. Too many of them, guys. Too many. Absolutely too many earthquakes next to the hydroelectric generation. VLF, guys. VLF. Very low frequency. Let's go down into Oregon now. Cascadia, Oregon. Oregon. What is here in Oregon? Let's go take a look, shall we? You guys having fun on this update? I am. There we are. Oh, no big deal. We are right next to Sand Mountain Volcanic Field. Look at the lava flows coming off here. Some of them are very young, coming off of Belknap Knoll, for instance. But over here, Sand Mountain, look at how many there are. Let's get an angle on this. There we go. All right. You can see it now. Now, let me go ahead and click on this from the Smithsonian if you've never read the info. It's not going to erupt now, even though it's a modern era of volcanic field. A few hundred to a few thousand years old at the most, supposedly. All right, that's where our 1.1 earthquake is. What do all these have in common? This volcano, that volcano, this volcano, that volcano, the nuclear test site, Yellowstone. I'm sorry, the nuclear storage site. The gravity wave sensing station and the power lines and power generation facilities. They all, oh, another explosion, geez. And not a quarry blast. Let's go take a look. Fair Oaks, Oregon. They all have one thing in common. Very low frequency is going to affect them. Whether it's a magma chamber or the power lines or the edge of the craton, this very low frequency wave that's going across the plates. Hey, look, another trunk of high voltage transmission lines, and I mean the big kind. What else do we have here? A hotspot? anything else here nearby oh 
the North Umpakwa River. Okay. I don't see any power generation facilities here, but I, again, I don't recall ever having to look. I would think they wouldn't. This doesn't look like a big river that would have power generation facilities on it. It's more of a smaller Washington, Oregon type river. Okay, nothing there. The power lines go right next to it. We can follow them, and that'll take us to where it's being generated. If it's very far away, I won't lean towards it, but it's right next to the power lines. That cannot be ignored. Yeah, they go all the way up here to the north. Look at that. Oh, wow. Hold on. Do they really connect into the spot that just had the other earthquake up to the north? Let's... <laughs> My goodness gracious. Okay, I'm getting really sidetracked there. Get back over to the quake itself. Let's search it one more time, see if there's anything else there besides the power lines. Again, power lines, you can't ignore it, guys. It's not like they have big high-voltage power lines everywhere. There's one trunk. Look over to the east. There's one trunk to the east, miles to the east. And maybe over here in town there might be one. I mean, literally, there's two. So to have the earthquake right next to it is. This place is called Non-Periel. Known periel Bare Oaks. Okay, that's it. That's all that's there. I don't even think there's any marked faults there. We could go check the USGS fault zone map. I don't know if that'll help us too much, but I don't think there are any marked fault. Yeah, yeah. look. it's it, it got a completely blank up in here. <laughs> okay. Let's go down to Southern... Well, Southern California, and then we'll work back up to Northern California. Far Southern California... Now that a five is hit, here along the San Andreas Fault, or the Calaveras Fault, south of San Francisco, we have to watch down here to the south still now for a few more days. Three. Last night was the last day of the warning, and I'm 270 miles off on my warned location. Not too bad for something everybody said was impossible. And I got it down to the magnitude. Not only that, to a point within the magnitude. So I'm pretty happy about that. It took a few days longer, one day. So it's seven, eight, 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 eight days instead of seven. Over to the East Texas, we watch at the bend of the Panhandle, which goes through the edge of the Craton, which if you're not aware of the Craton, one more time, it's on the screen. Is there anything else we should look up here? Oh, Northern California, yeah, gotta talk about that. So Northern California, we're going to get another new significant sized earthquake up here off the coast pretty soon. Probably in the 6 range. I don't know if they'll report it if it's out in the ocean. 6 range now. It's coming in. 6s are going around the whole plate, guys. I already showed it to you at the start of this update. 6.4 to 6.7 going around the whole plate. That means it's coming to Alaska. That means it's coming to the west coast of the United States. 6s. Will it be as high as 6.4 to 6.7? I don't think so. I think it'll be low in 6. Or, yeah. USGS 5.9, right? They'll take it down to a 4.9, right? No, just kidding. So up here on the plate boundary in Alaska, we haven't changed anything. We're watching out at Vaniaminoff Volcano out here at the peninsula. And I'll just add on a day to that. And then over here off the west coast, out here off the northwest coast of California, southwest coast of Oregon again, 6.0. Once that hits, then we'll have new warnings to issue for the rest of the United States, including Southern California, again. So it's going to be busy. I don't think the big earthquake is going to be hitting, unless it already hit, and I just missed it, and everybody else in the world somehow didn't capture it. But, eh, I don't know. Private seismometers probably would capture it, but what would they ever find out? Like, they get some big signature that comes across, and they go check the USGS site, and it doesn't show anything. They'll, like, rip the page out, delete it, and just to, like, stay on their good side. I don't know. I don't trust anybody. They don't trust me. I don't trust them. It's like dual, no trust world. But I have a reason not to trust them, right? Okay. If you don't know, I have a long story on that. Let's get back to it. Let's talk about this one more time. Same-sized earthquakes on both sides of the planet going out all the way over to Philippines and going out all the way to South Sandwich, going to Colombia and Panama and should be also coming to the coast of the United States and Alaska. We should also see a new 6.5 strike right here on the coast of Japan in Tokyo. 
North Tokyo. I don't know what the word is for earthquake in Japanese. It would probably be pretty funny for me to try and attempt to speak Japanese to say the word earthquake. However, I don't think I need to with the appropriate translations and people who speak English over there. Look where all three sets of rings overlap. Do you see how they all overlap right here? Let me show you what's there, where all three sets of rings overlap. We'll go back to the USGS plate boundary map. Go over to Japan. There it is. All three sets of rings overlap south of Tokyo on this H-shaped plate boundary. Now look what that's attached to. That's attached to what just broke with a 6.4 to 6.7. The flow should come up and go into Japan and also carry on and go over to Alaska, Vanimanoff Volcano, and down into the United States over the course of the next several days. Should also go out over to the west, over to Europe. Hasn't happened yet. That may be a strikeout for me completely like the big earthquake for this week. So I do get it wrong. I mean, I, people say that I like try to take credit for all that. No, man, when I get it wrong, I get it wrong, and I get on and beat myself up and try to figure out where I got it wrong. Where did the energy go? Now, it could be that instead of a single large earthquake, what we're seeing is Mother Nature balance this out across the whole Pacific and adjacent plates. That if I'm looking for an 8 right here, and instead, all around the whole Pacific, the, on the plate that I'm looking for an 8, all sides break with a 6.7 or 7. So let's just say upper 6s to low 7s. Upper 6s to low 7s go all the way around the plate. Or let's just say even low 6s to mid-range 6s go all the way around the whole plate instead of a single larger earthquake. Then Mother Nature is distributing out the big force that I was looking to happen right in the middle. And it distributed out all the way around. The fact is, is that it's following the plate boundaries. That's indisputable at this point. What else just hit since I did my update? South Japan? Anybody else? Anything else hit since doing my update? Last day of the warning for Europe. If it doesn't hit by tomorrow, I'm canceling the warning and getting egg on my face over in Europe. I don't know what they call that over in Italy. What do you call it when you get egg on your face over in Italy? I, I don't know. Crepe on face? I know that's French. <laughs> ah, yes, when you're over here in France, you get, you get crepe on face. Come on, man. I'm full of jokes all day long. It's the only thing that keeps me going sometimes. Now, speaking of keeping you going sometimes, do you have an emergency kit? I'm serious now. Freaking listen. Do you, have an, do you have an emergency kit and an earthquake plan? I was going to say an earthquake kit, but you need an emergency kit to get you through all sorts of things. Change your clothes, set of shoes, flashlight, batteries. I don't sell any of that stuff. You can get it, most likely, at the dollar store. Most of the stuff. The food, I don't know. It'll be fruit roll-ups, granola bars for me for the first few days. High energy, high protein. You're going to skip the steaks. You're going to stick to stuff that's easy to prepare and stuff that maybe doesn't even require any cooking. Lightweight prepackaged food I'm talking about. You need it. So think about it. Stuff with sugar in it too. Stuff that's going to give you energy. You don't want to be caught with no food. I'm serious. You get caught with no food, you're going to be freaking out like every other person that's going to be when they're caught with no food. Now for water, it's expensive to have the pump. Those pumps, expensive. 200 at least bucks, $200 at least for a good mountain backpackers, you know, 5,000 gallon pump, pump brackish water. You could try to do the straws. That's putting a lot of faith in those little straws and it's not going to make it taste better. So just saying, you need to have a plan. You need to know what to do. Earthquakes are just one thing you need to prepare for. The emergency kit can have the extra IDs, the extra set of keys, blah, 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 blah. something simple. Here, here's something simple. Set of shoes or hard bottom slippers by the side of your bed. I use this example all the time. Something so simple that you can do that doesn't require anything except for you to literally put a set of shoes or a set of slippers by the side of your bed. So if it hits the fan, whether it's a fire 
or a burglar or an earthquake or severe weather you weren't prepared for and sirens are going off or whatever that you can jump out of your bed and put your shoes on because there may be broken things across the floor. And think of Bruce Willis in Die Hard. Think of that. Have you ever seen Die Hard? <laughs> yippee ki yay Okay, no, no, not that part. Hans Gruber. No, not that part. The part where there's the glass on the floor and he's walking across and he doesn't have shoes. I always wonder why he didn't just get some notebooks and like, you know, he's in an office. Why not get some notebooks and just wrap them around your feet? Dude, stupid. His character, I mean. His character. Okay. Let's get back over here and look at this wonderful gray day out here. We finally got rain. That's not what shut me off. No, 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 no. Uh, shut off came before any kind of storm came through. Shut off happened when I showed everybody what the Russians said about the Japan earthquake. You guys know about that? You guys know about the, what the Russians said about the Japan earthquake in 2011 and tsunami? I don't know if you're ready for this. I don't, people told me this was a conspiracy and that they were just bluffing and they didn't mean anything. Okay, now, what did the Russians say? Yep. Well, you almost heard it. The Russians took credit for the Japan earthquake in 2011. And their lead speaker of the conservative part, oh, I guess they all are over in Russia. Um, the lead speaker of their right-wing party or whatever got on TV and was talking about, Russian TV, was talking about the World Trade Organization. This is back in 2011. And they were upset with the way they were being treated. And he goes on to say, and I'm going to play this for you in a second with an accurate translation down below, where the Russian guy goes on, the Russian leader goes on to say that, well, he takes credit for the Japan earthquake and tsunami and goes on to tell the Western powers that they're going to be coming to Moscow to give into the demands of Moscow and that it was a silent weapon, not lasers or lightning bolts or missiles or bombs that explode, that can put to sleep. Now, the word he used in Russian can be translated a few different ways. It can be put to sleep, lay down, or put to rest. But anyway, he says they could put whole continents down or to rest or to sleep with this silent weapon, he said. And he goes, you know that Japan earthquake, right? You know the tsunami, right? Mm -hmm. And he raises his hand, shrugs his shoulders, and makes a sarcastic comment that they did it. Then, right at the end, he goes on to say, this is 10 years ago, that then Vice President Biden came over and agreed with Moscow's position on this and that, but that he was, they were going to create a new tsunami on the other side of the planet from Japan in the Caucasus Mountains. And that the new borders of Russia would go all the way over to Turkey. They said this in 2011. Now, guess what's there? You guessed it. Where did Russia just invade? So I think it's important everybody sees that Russia took credit for this. This isn't me doing anything. This has actually been a video that got buried on the Internet. You'll have a hard time finding Russia threatens to use harp type tsunami weapon. New World Order WMD proof. It's been out since May 16, 2011. And it's here on the screen right now. I'm going to hit play. And you can listen and read the translation yourself. Некоторые в Тбилиси считают, что Москва словами Геннадия Онищенко о допуске грузинских вин на российский рынок выкидывает белый флаг перед Грузией, от которой зависит вступление России во Всемирную торговую организацию. Что бы вы сказали по этому поводу? Никакого белого флага нету, не надейтесь. Ни перед кем никогда мы не склоняли голову. Перед нами склоняли голову все великие державы. И Китай, Япония, Германия, Франция, и том, в том числе и США. А допуск ВИН, я думаю, что здесь проблема в целом общая. Мы прекращали допуск на наш рынок любых товаров из Молдавии и из Белоруссии, поэтому прямой связи да, но Владимир с Вольфович. отношением Грузии, вступлением России в ВТО и проблемами, связанными с каким-то экспортом в Россию, я думаю, нет. Рычагов достаточно у России, чтобы повлиять на Грузию и получить от нее нужное для России решение. С винами, без вин, с таможней, без таможни. Решение будет найдено. Об этом договорятся в Вашингтоне и в Москве.
в Брюсселе и в Китае, в Пекине. Только четыре столицы в мире. Вашингтон, Брюссель, Москва, Пекин. Все, четыре столицы. Больше никто ни на что влиять не может. И лишний игрок в международных отношениях. Четыре столицы всегда договорятся. Обама, представитель Евросоюза, Медведев, представитель Китая. Все, они в четвером договорятся. При этом китайцы приедут в Москву, согласятся с позицией Москвы. Европейцы приедут в Москву, согласятся с позицией Москвы. И американцы приедут в Москву, как Байден сейчас был. И обо всем договорятся. Проблем нет. Все решают только четыре столицы. При этом Вашингтон не имеет будущего, Америка искусственное государство рухнет. Европа старая, так сказать, уже континент, который никакой роли не играет. Китай на пороге взрыва. И остается космическая держава Россия. С огромными деньгами, ресурсами и новым оружием, о котором еще никто не знает. Любую часть планеты уничтожим в течение 15 минут. Ни одного взрыва, ни одного, так сказать, всплеска там, луча какого-то лазерного, угу. там, молния. Нет, тихо, спокойненько. Целые континенты будут спать вечным сном. А может вы нам подробнее расскажете, как вы собираетесь это делать? Все остальное. Вот цунами сейчас, Япония. Вы курил вы хотели? Вот вы будете разбирать обломки всех ваших зданий. И сдохните все 120 миллионов, если вы еще потребуете курила от нас. Так и все остальные. Пусть подумают о своем будущем. О своем будущем пусть думают. Тоже мне еще грузинские вина и там какие-то наблюдатели. Они хотят, чтобы забыли слово «Грузия» в мире. И будет русско-турецкая граница. Вот подумайте, пускай Саакашвили об этом. То цунами будет другая. В другой части Кавказа. Um, and... okay, so... Некоторые в Тбилиси считают, что... ...огромными деньгами, ресурсами и новым оружием, о котором еще никто не знает. Любую часть планеты уничтожим в течение 15 минут. Ни одного взрыва, ни одного, э, так сказать, э, всплеска там, э, луча какого-то лазерного, угу. там, молния. Нет, тихо, спокойненько. Целые континенты будут спать вечным сном. А может вы нам Все подробнее расскажете, как вы собираетесь это делать? Все остальное. Вот цунами сейчас, Япония. Вы курили хотели? Вот вы будете разбирать обломки всех ваших зданий. И сдохните все 120 миллионов, если вы еще потребуете курила от нас. Так и все остальные пусть подумают о своем будущем. О своем будущем пусть думают. Тоже мне еще грузинские вина и там какие-то наблюдатели. Они хотят, чтобы забыли слово Грузия в мире. И будет русско-турецкая граница. Вот подумайте, пускай Сакашвили об этом. Тут цунами будет другая. В другой части Кавказа. It is what it is, guys. Uh, deny that. You know, people said he was conspiracy theory and that it would, you know, and it didn't mean anything. And that was back in 2011. They took credit, and you saw him. You know, there's that tsunami in Japan, right? Okay, you know that they're taking credit for that by doing that on international news. It's not bluffing or any kind of talk like that. That's real. That can really happen. It did really happen. And there we are. So why, why are people in denial about stuff like that? Well, uh, lack of control. Lack of control. I mean, come on. If they've got a weapon like that, now you know why things are going the way they're going. Um, sure, we probably have stuff that's similar, or maybe we don't. I would say that the Harp to Jupiter thing is a total BS cover story for having Harp active and doing something else here on Earth having to do with Russia. But that's just my take on it. I can't prove that. It's just a guess. I mean, I think, again, the Jupiter thing is BS cover story for firing up Harp and having it ready to go, and it's all over the place. And that we really are on the edge, and everybody kind of knows it, but what can I say? That's them in 2011 taking credit for the Japan tsunami. Everybody needed to see that if you hadn't seen it already. Hate to leave you on such a note like that, but that's why you need an earthquake plan. That's why you need a severe weather plan. That's why you need an emergency kit. Because things can get out of control really quick. And then there's people that are messing around doing all kinds of stuff that makes it worse. And yes, there is an earthquake effect having to do with HARP and the other facilities around the planet. And anybody who told you that's a either mistaken person or they're literally lying to you. It's pretty much the options. I mean, either somebody's ignorant about it or they just don't know. 
like they don't know, like literally they don't know, or they're liars. All right, and on that note now, let's go ahead and hit save and upload this to YouTube where everybody can watch it back forevermore. I'll be with you in chat over on YouTube as we watch it in the premiere. You guys be safe. People get worried about me being safe. Don't worry about me. Guys, don't worry. If they're going to come blow me up, they'll come blow me up. When it's your time, it's your time. Got many more things to worry about than that. What's going to happen to me after I die is what I'm worried about. You should be worried about that too more than anything. There's an afterlife, apparently. Hate to break it to you, not trying to get too serious, but since we went there with the Russians, got to go there with this. Hey, guess what? Do you know that God's real? M minds are exploding right now. Everybody's just completely freaking. I don't care. You think I care if you freak? This is YouTube. You're supposed to freak. If you're not freaking, there's something wrong with you. I'm on Twitch right now, so the people on Twitch are like, what? No, I'm recording this for the people on YouTube, guys. Come on. Anyway, I'll be there with you. I'll be there with you when the world ends. Hopefully not, actually. Peace out.